my name is Stuart J. Murphy. I'm really happy to be with you here today to show you my new book. I have a brand new book and it's just come out and uh, it's uh, very thrilling for me. It's called Show and Tell. I have a copy of it right here. It's about great graphs and smart charts, how to build and understand graphs and charts. And it truly is an introduction to the wonderful world of infographics, how we can collect data and then organize it and then make it dynamic so that other people can understand it. That sounds great, Stuart, but before we start talking about show and tell, could you give us some information about your background? Well, I'd like to do that, Lisa. This is Lisa Strawbridge, who is my interviewer today, and my videographer is Nancy Kalenko, and they're both here to be able to help me to create this video to share with all of you. And I've made a little list of some of the things from my career uh, that um, will give you a feeling about my background. First of all, my field of work is in the area of visual learning, how children learn from visual stimuli like charts and graphs and diagrams and other visual displays. And I've applied that to a number of different products along the way. For example, um, Envision Mathematics, which is a major elementary school curriculum. And it is uh, um, uh, basically a school program that many of you have experienced, I'm sure. And I'm the visual learning author on that program. Um, it's public, published by Savas Learning, which also publishes Three Cheers for Pre-K. And I'm on that authorship team, and it is a full pre-K curriculum, a school readiness curriculum, uh, that includes a robust math and literature section to it. And then in my own books, the books that I've written, there's the Math Start series, which includes a total of 63 books uh, that um, teach mathematical concepts in the context of stories, and runs from pre-K up to grade four. It's published by HarperCollins Children's Books, I See, I Learn, which is published by Charles Bridge, and I See, I Learn is a 16-book series that covers social skills, emotional skills, health and safety skills, and cognitive skills for very young children. And then finally, also published by Charles Bridge, is my brand new book, Show and Tell. So that gives you a little bit of a feeling of my background and how I have applied visual learning strategies to the kinds of things that uh, I work on and that I worked on in my career. Well, after all that, what made you want to write a book about charts and graphs? Well, you know, it's something I've always wanted to cover because charts and graphs have, let's face it, they've become part of our language. And it's important that young kids know about them, you know. And I'm, I'm, I'm not talking about um, um, data and charts and graphs of Wall Street, the world, and the universe. I'm talking about things that young children can relate to, ideas that come from their own lives and their own experiences. And if young children can learn how to collect data and, and see what it is, and, and then organize it. And then if they can create interesting graphs out of it using their mathematical skills, and then finally decorate and enhance those graphs to become um, exciting and dynamic infographics, that will give them the foundational skills they need to both do the give part of it. The give part is creating those things so that other people can understand data, but also the take part of it where they can read charts and graphs successfully that have been created by others. I really think it is part of their language and these foundational skills are very, very important to them. Well, what are some of the benefits of learning about charts and graphs for children? Well, you know, there are many of them. There are many benefits that come from this, and I've been most of a few of those because uh, I, we wanted to be able to share them in this video and make sure that uh, I covered them all uh, for you. And one, of course, is that it's math from your life. Uh, it's math from the lives of these children. They're collecting the data. It's real. Uh, they know what the data is. They know how they got it. So it's not make-believe stuff. And it's a, a, an, an example of applied math, math applied to real life. You know, no longer that question of when am I ever going to use that. Instead, it's how can I use it and look what I can do with it. And um, there are social aspects associated with it using math socially that are really important. For example, if they were going to do a family survey of something that they wanted to create a chart and graph about and gauge their entire family or even a group of friends or classmates in school, they would become part of a group and it would be great to create that information and then show it to others. And one of the big advantages is it can be done as early as pre-K. And some people question, well, can you really do graphs and charts with pre-kindergarten children, for goodness sakes? And I say, yes, you can. Um, children, I found at that age, like to do things with 
tangible objects like maybe uh, unifix cubes or just any kind of blocks or buttons or coins and, and each one represents one and so it's one to one correspondence that they're learning about and at the same time they can build a graph if they got three blocks that go this side, one block that goes this side, you know that there are more of those and so consequently they can even create physical charts and graphs before they start creating them in a two-dimensional format. Well, those seem like wonderful opportunities for children, Stuart. Now, I can't wait to see the book. Can you show us some of the graphs, the charts? Sure, I'd love to. Here's the book right here. And, uh, you know, as I open the book, we get into some of the things in the front of the book that are introductory in nature and probably provide information that you'll uh, have as a basis to uh, um, understand why this book is important and how to use it. And um, first of all, I want to point out that the illustrator is a woman by the name of, of uh, uh, Teresa Belong. And Teresa Belong comes from Madrid, Spain. She's done a wonderful job of of uh, livening up this book with her very colorful art. And, um, the, um, and of course, there's the title and the uh, subtitle of the book. And we cover four basic types of charts and graphs. And so one is bar graphs, um, which are great for comparing data. Another are pie charts, which uh, are uh, uh, a circle graph. And, and you can see different percentages of things through pie charts. Line graphs, which show movement over time. And then finally, pictographs, which are great fun because they create pictures. Uh, they're created with pictures, and, and kids love that, to be able to create a graph of mathematical information with pictures. And so I think I'll start by, by uh, showing you a pictograph from the book. And so what's going on here is that we decided to get, find out the information about what the most common pets were in, in the school. And so let's say the members of your science club want to know which are the most common household pets. Recent statistics show that in the United States, fish are at the top of the list. That's because people usually own more than one fish at a time. And then after fish, the four most common pets are cats, dogs, birds, and hamsters, or other small mammals like hamsters. And so what we did was we collected the information about how many people had birds, how many families had birds, how many had cats, dogs, fish, and hamsters. And you can see what happened here, that birds, there are a total of 10. And so, so what we're going to use, actually, because these numbers get large, we're going to say that that bird represents 10. Cats, there were a total of 45. And so that cat would represent 10 of those. And I'll show you in a minute what to do with it. Dogs, there were 40. Fish, there were 60. And hamsters, 25. And so then what happened is that we took that information, and as I said, we decided that one bird or one symbol of that animal would represent 10. And if we had a five, it'd have to be a half. And so, for example, with hamsters way down here, you can see that hamsters, they were 10, 25. Fish, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. Dogs, 10, 20, 30, 40. Cats, 10, 20, 30, 45. And birds, 10. And so you had that basic information down here. And then the idea is to take that data, to take that representation of that data and enhance it and enliven it by giving it a title, an important title that tells what it's all about. In this case, I called it Pets Galore. And then there they are, the birds, the cats, the dogs, the fish, and the hamsters, all in a colorful display of the information and uh, showing you what an infographic is all about. And so I think I've got time for one more. And so I picked one other one that I'd like to show you. I mean, there are many in the book, um, but this one is about a line graph, so much more complicated. And it's about the two kids that are going on a trip in the back of the car. And you know how that goes. They get really bored really fast. And so they decided to take each interv interval by hour and see how many miles they went. And so they'd keep track of it. And they realized they went 40 miles in the first hour and then they went 60 miles in the second hour, and so that was a total of 100 miles, and they kept on going through all the hours until four o'clock in the afternoon when they finally got to their destination, and they had gone a total of 100, of, I'm sorry, 350 miles to get to where they went, and each interview, interval is a little bit different, and I'll show you why that happened, because they took that data, and what they did was they put it into a line graph, change over time, and so this is the time along the x-axis, we call that bottom line the x-axis, 
and I'm sorry, the y-axis is the bottom line, and that's time passing, and they're even intervals of time, 8 to 9, 9 to 10, 10 to 11, 11 to 12. You could actually pick any point between those two because it's changing all along the way. And, and then the x-axis is the one up the side. And so we start at 0, 50, 100, 150, and go all the way up to 350. And so those are the total of miles that they went. And you can see what happened to the line. The line goes up, 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 up. Sometimes it's steeper because they're going faster. Sometimes it's a little less steep because they're going slower. And then what happened here? It's flat, but it's moving, so something happened. Well, they stopped for lunch, so they're not going any miles. So the, material, the information on the x-axis remains the same, but the time is going by, and so the information on the y-axis has them going forward still, and so that's why it would be flat there. And so then we took that and did the same kind of thing. We wanted to jazz it up, make it exciting, make it fun for others to see. We called it On the Road Again and surrounded it with pictures of some of the things they saw along the way, put the little car going on its trip, and created an infographic uh, for this particular line graph to show you how it worked. Well, what about the way you presented them in Show and Tell? Is there a pattern? Well, yeah, there, there is a pattern to that because what I wanted to do in Show and Tell is to, um, is to give you the basics. I wanted it to be about collecting data. What is data? You know, data is numerical evidence of things that are taking place. How do you collect it? Well, you take polls and talk to other people or do other things to research a topic, and that's how you collect the data. And then how do you organize it so that you can see the data in a meaningful way? And then finally, making an infographic by turning it into something exciting and fun for others to be able to see. Well, how do you anticipate that this book will be used, Stuart? Well, you know, I think that it's going to be used by teachers. Teachers will definitely find ways to use this book because it does show mathematics applied to real-life situations. And um, I think teachers will be able to use it as school projects or assignments to groups of people or to kids, special projects to kids, or sending it home or uh, having projects sent home that come from the book so that parents can use it at home. Obviously, parents and caregivers can make use of it because they care deeply about their kids' improving their math skills and to be able to show how math is used in everyday life. I think librarians will use it because they too are responsible for, particularly children's book librarians, are responsible for giving kids projects and doing things within the library with small groups of children. So I think it has lots, lots and lots of uses and of course the skills associated with it, the benefits that come from it, that accrue from that are really very, very important. Well, have we covered everything? Well, you know, I think we should talk about building a, a, a building one because I think it would be helpful for teachers to see at least one example of how easy it is to do this. Uh, so that it's not a huge thing, it's something that they can do. And I, I think I've, I've collected a little bit of data about, a, uh, um, uh, about building a, uh, um, a, good, a good example of a bar graph comparing items that I think would give you an example of how easy it is to do that. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and build them right before your eyes. And I collected my data over here, so just one quick second. And um, the came up with the idea of a, a picnic. So this could be a school picnic. And the school picnic um, is going to have a fruit stand. And the fruit stand is going to have um, a bunch of different fruit at it. And at the meeting, they're trying to say what fruit that is essential that they have. So they took a poll of a lot of people to find out what their most popular fruits would be. And so they, oops, they considered pears. And in the pears, they had a total of 13 people who thought pears were important. Um, apples, which are always very, very popular. Apples, um, they had 32 people who voted for apples, bananas, and in the banana department, there were 20, peaches, there were 26 people who voted for peaches, and for plums, there were nine. So now we've got the basic data. We've collected the data. Again, that goes back to how I've organized the book. And so we've collected the data, and we have it in front of us, and so now what do we do with it? Well, I would suggest in that particular case of building a bar graph. So we make our x-axis down the side like that, like a big L, our y-axis across the bottom. 
We saw the numbers and we went up to 32, so we know nothing goes over about 40, so I put a zero down here, and 10, 20, 30, 40, so those run up the side in even intervals, and then across the bottom I'll have each of the categories. And so we'll put down pairs, for example, and in the pair, in pairs, there were 13. So not quite up to 20, not quite up to 15, right about there I would put it, a line over there, and color it in, and that would be the pairs, okay? And then, as far as apples, I'm all the way up to 32, so a little bit over the 30 up here, and then come down, and fill that bar up, and that's the apple bar, and so that's how many people preferred apples. Um, for bananas, there were 20 people who voted for uh, bananas, and so that's easy, it's right there, and so there are bananas. Uh, peaches, 26, so a little over halfway between 20 and 30, so I'm gonna put it right there, and so there's the number of people who preferred peaches, and let's see, H-E-S, and then finally plums, and there were nine people, just under 10 over here, nine people who preferred plums. You know, if you did this on graph paper, it'd be very exact, but you can also do it on plain paper because it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. It just has to show you what the differences are and how you might do it. And um, then what happens is you can easily see, I'm gonna take a different color just for fun, um, and uh, you can easily see that if you were going to have a um, fruit table for dessert at your picnic, you probably would wanna make sure that those fruits right there, apples, bananas, and peaches, uh, were available to those at the, uh, at the event. And you want to give this a fun title, just to have a fun title for it, and so I'm thinking that I'd call it Tutti Frutti. Tutti Frutti, and so it's all the fruits that might be available at the school picnic. So I think that um, I wanted to give, give you a chance to see uh, what it would be like to build one. You can do it fairly quickly, you can do it very casually, you can have fun with it, if uh, kids were doing it, they might put pictures or they might draw pictures of the pears and the plums and, and the bananas and enhance it in lots of different ways to make it indeed a very colorful and fun infographic. And, and, and you asked about uh, whether I think we've covered everything. You know, um, I could go on because we've got many different kinds of graphs in the book, uh, but I want you to use the book and see it and see for yourself. Uh, there's some great ones in there, everything from uh, sporting events, prefer preferences in sporting events to uh, kinds of different kinds of foods that kids like. There's even a family burping contest. It goes on for a week, and boy, we really see the results of that. Um, so I think, um, I, I think I've covered the biggest things I wanted to cover, and that is to let you know about this brand new book, about how excited I am about it, and about the importance of the foundational skills it contains. Thank you, Stuart. And I wish you all the success with show and tell. Well, thank you, Lisa, and thank you, Nancy, for being the videographer, and uh, I hope you all enjoy my book, and uh, thanks for listening.